Yep. We're going there. Anime is not really that diverse, and it wouldn't hurt to be. It's not that surprising. Japan is one of the least diverse countries out there, so of course their media reflects this. The few people of color who do appear are either background characters, side characters, or... Let's just say other. But a manga that not only stars a person of color, but also depicts racial discrimination and is an adventure shounen? That's really rare. What started as a one-off recommendation turned out to be one of the funnest mangas I have read in a long ass time. You know that moment when you meet someone who's also an anime and you both start trading off names and recommendations? That's how I found out about this. It's funny because out of all the things he recommended me, this is the one he talked about the least. But after starting it, I couldn't put it down. The story is about a former samurai named Yiro who lost a battle in the late 1800s during the Satsuma Rebellion. He couldn't bring himself to commit seppuku and instead exiled himself to America out in the frontier. After some events, he runs into a Native American named Red Sun, later on just Red. He's a Sioux Wissa, and when he was young, witnessed his entire tribe slaughtered by a military division known as the Blue Platoon. As far as he knows, he's the only surviving member of his tribe. As revenge, he seeks out to kill every surviving member of the platoon. Later on, they run into Angie, a former prostitute who's really good with a gun, Gray, a mercenary who's disguised as a preacher, and as it goes on, more characters are introduced and more is revealed. It's not just a western version of Journey to the West, it has its own meanings and morals that you rarely see in adventure manga. Yeah, it goes there. But I'm getting ahead of myself. It lasted from 1998 to 2005, but it was just translated last year. It was written and drawn by Kinchi Morita, who didn't do much else. This manga was even serialized in a magazine that was really short-lived, and the writing kinda shows. It's hard to explain, but it's written like it's about to get cancelled the very next chapter. My guess is that because of the unusual setting, he was probably afraid it would get scrapped like other mangas with similar settings. The whole story is unusually paced for its genre, which is the best part, but also the worst flaw. The best part is because nothing really drags on. It's fast paced, but in a good way. As much as I love anime and manga, it's hard for me to get into adventure battle shonens, mainly because it just starts to drag after a while. It's a personal thing, and I know the term shonen may not be the right term, it really just translates to stories for young boys. In fact, this is more of a saiyan, meaning it's really hard R. But you know what I mean, stories with long stretching arcs, adventures that last forever, backstories and slow fighting. For me, it can be hit or miss, but because this goes at a much faster pace, nothing drags. Like for example, a lot of shonens like to have backstory arcs. This has a few, but on average there's only like 4 or 5 chapters. The only one that's long was Yiro's, and that's just felt right. It focuses on the villain of the week while they build up to the final boss, who is... who, He's a real treat. The main character, Red, goes through some changes. I like when we first meet him, he's all happy and nice-spirited, and then about a quarter of the way, he just turns into guts. The more we learn of his backstory, the angrier he gets. They really develop his family and tribe, and what happens after... well, we'll get there later. Red is just a great main character. His actions feel just, and when he becomes more violent, it does just kinda happen. Again, fast-paced, but it makes sense the more you learn. Yiro is first portrayed as a cowardly samurai who's trying to find courage. Then it kind of focuses on finding friendship between him and Red. He really wants to help Red and become his friend, but Red is just too focused on his goal. This comes from when he had a friend back in Japan that abandoned him, so there's a lot of back and forth between them. 
He also has a giant ass musket left over from the Edo period, and you bet it's based off of an obscure prototype. He keeps saying he doesn't need a scope, he can shoot from miles away. Does that make sense? No, but it's presented in a way that can make me suspend my disbelief enough. Angie is just overall great. She's strong, smart, and just overall cute. She was a prostitute, but she knows how to use a gun. When she was younger, she grew up with a native, so she has this connection with Red. There's a bunch of other characters, like Grey, the bounty hunter disguised as a pastor whose father was a Swedish immigrant, Goldsmith, who was a private in the Blue Platoon, and Red just keeps him alive for more arms, Chirika, a young Apache boy who follows around Red, look at him wearing a tuxedo, and Scarlet, a brave, helpful little girl whose story you just have to see for yourself. I'm sorry, it's just really one of those stories. Every character looks distinct. No two characters look alike. Well, I mean, there are these twin characters, but you know what I mean. Every character is fine detailed. It's impressive to keep this track going for 150 chapters, especially at the time. In the late 90s, early 2000s, there was a style called Maruku Kusuki, the idea to make characters look the same despite regional differences. The idea was to make everyone stateless, but it was probably just to make it easier to animate. But his art style is just overall unique. He even has some downright beautiful illustrations with this depthless coloring. There's no fine detail, it's just high contrast black and white colors. Reminds me of Frank Miller style. A lot of people like to criticize manga for being all black and white, but these pages show that you can do a lot with just limited colors. With the faces being so specific, it was really refreshing. Plus the setting too. It's a western, and I do think there are some people who might be turned off from that, and I get it. In America, westerns have been milked to the point where even today there are just shovel loads of B-tier movies. But that doesn't mean they're all bad. The great westerns are the ones that can do something new with the genre. I don't think someone should be so dismissive to a genre just because of a few bad works. Or a lot of bad works. Point is, there are more good westerns out there than you might think, and this is definitely one of them. In fact, I can see a lot of love for other westerns in this. There's the Swedish cowboy that you see in a lot of spaghetti westerns. The samurai in the frontier sounds a lot like the plot to Red Sun. There's the black leather goons, just like the ones in Django Kill. I want to say that the perfume flowers are a reference to Dead Man. The plot of a Native American avenging his tribe is similar to Navajo Joe. And it's been a while, but I think this shot's a reference to Broken Arrow. Yeah, but it's not all positivity. I've sundanced around it enough. Like, they try to paint Grover Cleveland in this kind of sympathetic light, and it's like, did you forget about the DOS Act or something? There's also a scene that's just scarcely like a school shooting, and it came out in 98, so it's just a bad coincidence, really. Remember when I said it was fast and that was both a good and bad thing? Well, the bad is that it doesn't know what a transition is. This manga is very violent. In fact, if you're not one for violence, I have a hard time recommending this. There are some brutal depictions of Native Americans getting slaughtered. It really wants to be taken seriously, but also wants to be a fun adventure manga. It wants to have that Roni Kinshin realism where it's not realistic, but presented in a believable way. Like for example, Red has this huge revolver that hurts him the more he uses it to the point it can break his arm. Believable, but not realistic. But at the same time, it wants to be real. Like there's literally a chapter showing these people getting brutally murdered and the next is a cute Lost Boys story. I think it might just because I'm reading it wrong. It was made for a monthly magazine, so the consistency is supposed to be more spread out. But there are still those brutal history and killings, which you can't really ignore. American history is flooded with sin. It's almost unavoidable to discuss the people who lived without bringing into those who died. The reason why most people don't like westerns is that most of them just ignore history. But not this western. This manga has some gory slaughters and murders and other gross imagery of racial discrimination. Yeah, I'm personally fine with bloody stories, but because of the subject matter, I took back a few times. It's not like Berserk where it's obviously a fantasy. Shit like this actually happened. This manga knows its history. Not just the brutal killings, but the small aspects as well. It shows off that American optimism, but then it's circumvented by someone getting called a slur. What other manga can bring in the subject matter? Even in Yiro's backstory arc, when he goes back to Japan, they try to bring in a little of that discrimination in there. It's nowhere similar, and they don't try to compare it, but it's just a theme that goes on. 
You might have also seen the names with colors. Everyone seems to be named after a color. Color seems to be a big thing, which I guess you could connect with race. One other theme is crying. I think every character cried at least once, and the villain has his own deal with it. When confronted with death, the only thing you can do is cry. It's proof that you're human. For such a violent manga, it has a lot of themes of compassion and equality. But I still think it could be seen as a little too violent. Is it disrespectful to depict atrocities in such a simple medium? Or is it necessary to show the pain and hardships of history? It's an art debate that doesn't seem to have an answer, and I'm sorry, but I don't have one either. But I can say this. There's a page where the author states that he's against discrimination and just depicts it to be more realistic. By the end, he thanks the Lakoto people. There's not much detail other than that, but hey, this is already pretty obscure. There's evidence that he really cares, that this is made with respect. This is a manga about a diverse group of people killing military men to avenge the death of natives. We can debate about how well its depictions are, but you can't deny that this was made with respect of those who are oppressed and with resentment towards those who continue to oppress. Plus, this is the only manga that makes coonskin caps look cool. <laughs> <laughs>